You know, some writing days are better than others. Hi writers, welcome to my channel. Here you will find quick tips and some author inspiration. Today it's about maybe not author inspiration, but just a little bit of simpatico. We all need that. Writing is full of angst. We've got the panic. We've got the euphoria. We've got creative outbursts and uh, emotional meltdowns. True. We experience all of those highs and lows. And that's a good thing. You know why? Because we can bring all of that to our characters. But you know what would be really good is if there was a therapist just for writers, like a therapist who specialized in writers. Do they have that? I mean, I think there's even like specialized neuroses that we have. And if there's not, I made a few up. So just for fun today, we're going to discuss writing neuroses and author neuroses and, and see maybe if you have one of these things. I have several. Hmm. But first I want to say one of the most common struggles I think that writers have is bouncing back during any kind of disappointment or stuff that's going on in the world. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the world now. And it's good to just know that we can power on through it. And if we can't power through it, that's okay too. So here is a list of common writing neuroses and psychoses that I totally made up. <laughs> so first one from my list, synonym mania. That's listing 10 different synonyms and agonizing over them to determine which one is the very, very best for that sentence. And I think that's okay to find the perfect word to convey what you need. And I think this only really becomes a problem if you start doing this while conversing with regular people. Number two, uber vocabulary. That's a tendency to use words like vanquished in everyday conversation. Number three, reality apnea. That's zoning out in the middle of a conversation with a real life person when something suddenly strikes you about your plot, your characters, your conflict, your theme, the emotions. Oh my gosh, you have to do it right now. Of course you went bye-bye. They're still talking. <laughs> Number four, rewrite a plasty. That's just rewriting over and over and over again, which is good, all good. But if you've written that sentence 20 different ways and you're still not happy with it, that's a rewrite aplasty. Literary craving. I don't know about you, but I crave whatever food or drink I am writing about in my novel. For Dragon Lady, it was tea and Asian food. For the Emperor's Assassin and for the Impaler's Wife, wine. Yeah, I was having wine every night. I couldn't help it. There was wine in the novel. I needed some wine. I need to write about the wine. When I was writing Confessions of a Sheba Queen, I, and that's historical erotica, I was craving figs and lamb and dates and like grainy ancient foods. Number six, OCP. Yeah, don't confuse it with OCD. That's obsessive compulsive plot discussions with your significant other. You have to run it by them. You ran into a snag. We have to talk about the plot over dinner and while driving to dinner and during the movie and, and they finally say, oh, you must talk about the plot. I don't actually have a catchy word for this, but it's still an issue. Excessive nostril flaring. And you know when you do that? When you're at a party or talking to a bunch of people and they refer to your writing as a hobby. <sighs> Number eight, adverb phobia, fear of adverbs. We've all heard the warnings. Adverbs are clearly, positively, certainly the kiss of death. You must not use the adverbs. Really? Really, I can't use any adverbs, really? They are so beautifully, articulately perfect. 
for this sentence right here. I need the adverb. Number nine, authorosis. That's confusion brought on by the mountain, the plethora of conflicting things that people tell you about being an author. <sighs> how many reviews you have to have, how much of a platform you have to have, how many followers you have to have, how you have to do this and how you have to do that. And it's so overwhelming. How to build your brand, how to find readers, how to build your newsletter, how to sell more books, how to get into more blogs. You know the bit, you've heard them all. It sometimes feels like a mountain crushing down on authors. It's disheartening. It can be discouraging. And frankly, I just feel like a lot of that information changes all the time. What was true a year ago? Uh, not true today. And you know, uh, Amazon keeps changing their algorithms. Agents are looking for different things. I don't know if we can master it all truthfully. Number 10 is grammaropia. Grammar opia. That's the inability to find your own grammar mistakes. I think this is the result of three things. One, not knowing your grammar. Two, not applying the grammar that you do know correctly. And three, thinking that you are above mere grammar rules. How prosaic, how trite, how very, very dull. Grammar is important and you really have to know the grammar rules before you break them with purpose. Number 11 is verbation. That is the process of adding, using, including, writing, editing verbs. Do I have too many gerunds? You know, that's the verb that ends with ing. Is that the right verb? Can I find a better verb? I need a better verb. Number 12, proposition ectomy. That is a obsessive removal of prepositional phrases and replacing them with the perfect preposition. I actually think this might be a good thing. Too many prepositional phrases. Sometimes you get lost in the sentence. And honestly, I found that people, new writers, I wanna say new writers, new writers tend to overuse the preposition on. On is not an all-purpose preposition. So be mindful of your prepositions. 13 is follower anxiety. I think we might all have this. That's a fear that your followers and friends aren't increasing exponentially on your social media platforms. Who are these people? Where did they go? I need more, I need more. They tell me I need more. I think in a lot of ways, it's about engagement. There's algorithms for that. But frankly, yeah, I think we all stress about followers and engagement and, and rightly so because word of mouth sells books. The last one is spamsitude. That is the inability to refrain from spamming your friends and followers with buy my book, buy my book, buy my book and a bazillion retweets. You know what I'm talking about. So which neuroses do you have? Or do you have a new one? If you have a new one, I would love to hear it. Drop it in the comment section. Would love it. And if you suffer from a couple, I don't know if it's really suffering. I think it's just part of the game. I think it's just part of being an author. Anyway, if you know of such a therapist who deals in this, let me know. Drop that in the comment box too. And I think I forgot to say this in the beginning, but I would love if you would subscribe and hit that notification button. It helps me get noticed. And hey, I worry about my followers. <sighs> I need an appointment. No, seriously, I need an appointment. <laughs> Before I go today, I just wanna say that I, I am working on the third draft right now of my comedy drama. I just want to get it done, but I don't want to rush it because when I rush it, it's just not worth it for me to rush it. I do better when I can play and manipulate with the words and have fun and give it the flavor that I need it to. But I really, I'm like, I want to finish this so bad. Anyway, that's where I'm at 
for writing. I think sometimes it helps other writers to know where an author is in their process and what their feelings are. And I just want to get finished. I do. I don't want to make dinner. I don't want to do the laundry or go to the grocery store. I just want to work on this draft. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today. Subscribe, notify, you know, and remember writers, dream, create, and embrace. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.